Hey guys, it's Friday the 8th of February, so I finished filming my Chatelaine unboxing and I'm just literally finishing off up doing that upload as we speak. <laughs> so that's going to be up in the next few minutes. Obviously you're going to have seen that a few days before you actually see this next one. So obviously I've got all of this to organise into some more floss away bags. So I'm going to probably do that this evening and work on that so I will come back in and check with you later but I called into Hobbycraft because I was mentioning in my previous upload that I needed a container for storage so I picked up a few things while I was in Hobbycraft and I didn't know but they had a 20% off sale which was brilliant I never get that lucky so I don't know whether it's this weekend or it's just tonight I've not checked but obviously I've got a Hobbycraft um, store card so that entitled me to 20% off so that's brilliant so I did pick up a few bits and pieces so I did get this storage box um, it's a four litre one it's what I keep my heaven and earth and my Persephone in at the moment so all of my threads will go into that but there is some stuff inside it that I thought I would share with you so I'll just get the lid off. So I mentioned in my monthly update that I was really keen on starting to do some drawing and, and learn a bit of drawing. I mean my dad studied fine art at college and is absolutely amazing but I just thought you know what I'd like to give drawing a little bit of a go so I picked up a few things while I was in there. And my dad's going to loan me um, some of his pencils and some art books because I've bought him art books in the past as well but I thought I'd pick up a few bits so I just got these graphic um, graphite pencils so they're just your traditional graphite pencils they're the different shades that are in there so there's six shades in there so I thought that would be a good um, set to get started I picked up um, a, an electric eraser because these work really really quickly rather than your average erasers and I also got a putty eraser so you can form these into any shape that you like really so if you want to you know really make a point and, um, and, and erase a tiny tiny section you're able to do that with these putty type rubbers so I got that picked up a pencil sharpener I mean I know I've got pencil sharpeners because obviously I do um, shared in with with coloured pencils but I've not seen it in a while so I thought you know it was only a couple of quid so I might as well pick up one of those while I was in. I got some paper stumps for blending I do have some knocking around somewhere but they were I think they were a pound so they're only like the the Hobbycraft value one so I picked up a, a packet of those for a pound. I also then got my DMCs that I need let me just get them out, sorry, I hope I'm not making you feel seasick. So those are the colours. Surprisingly for once, Hobby Craft had the shades I needed. So there was three, three tens, there are two B, what is it, B five, two hundred, so your bright white, this yellow shade which is a seven two five, and then like a, a graphite grey which is an eight four four. So I managed to pick up those. So that is now Chatelaine complete <laughs> and then I've got a couple of art books as well just to to cap it all off um, so I've got um, I'm quite keen to draw people this is a thing that's attracted me more than anything so I've got a book on human proportions so it's you know how to draw a head in relation to the rest of the body and um, just just some interesting um, things within it because obviously you know tilting head face on um you know anatomy and things like that and then i also got um a beginner's guide guide to drawing people as well so it really t starts off with like basic egg head shape and um you know putting people in different planes eyes you know where the eyes sit in relation to the rest of the face because i mean I tend not to draw them in the right place anyway but yeah I'm quite keen to to have a go at it and obviously I know there's no shortcuts to learning to draw but you know obviously if you're learning to draw properly and particularly humans then you should study anatomy as well so you know where all the muscular structures and 
um, you know, skeleton is, but you know, I'm kind of in my forties, I don't have a lot of time. So I'm gonna see if I can do some shortcuts. And then I just bought, this is the last thing, um, a drawing pad, which is just a fine grain drawing pad, A4, just to, just to get me started really. So obviously I'm not gonna draw over this weekend, I don't think, because you know, I've got this business to do, but I just thought I'd get them in. And obviously I'm so glad I did because the book, one of the books was on offer and I got a 20% off with my coupon anyway. So fantastic. So I'm going to start cracking on with this little lot here and get it into all the floss away bags, all the colours sorted onto metal loops and, and sort of in this box ready for me starting this tomorrow. So that's my job tonight. Um, so yeah, I will catch up with you soon. Take care. Bye. I got to show you something. I got two of these boxes, so they were well, the two for a fiver. So I use these um, for you know storing crafts in things like that. Let's get the heavy bag, bag and I'll show you. So I've got two of those. One's like a, a greeny butterfly, and the other has some really pretty flowers on. So. Yeah, they're lovely, and they, yeah, they've not had these new little boxes in for a while. They're about the size of a shoe box, just for for reference purposes. But yeah, they're really cute. So a nice little bag in there, and obviously I'll probably put um, you know the supplies in for my um, Etsy stuff um, for the kits that I sell. So so yeah, I'm gonna crack on with the Chatelaine now. Catch you soon. It's still Friday, so I just thought I'm gonna sit here now, just organise everything into piles and then start splitting them out and putting them into some individual floss away bags so I've got everything together. So I'm just gonna spend the rest of the evening doing this. It's 9.30 now, I've had dinner, I'm kind of chilling out, I'm just watching some Netflix TVs on behind you. So I'm just gonna sit and watch some Netflix, do a bit of this and uh, yeah, you can do a little bit with me. Something years ago, those cold nights in December, and the sound of the falling snow, the fireplace warming us, the VHS movie box, your old broke down touring bus, and not a single cloud in the sky. If I could go back in time. I'd pack my bags right now If I could play back rewind I wouldn't think twice A pair of jeans and a dusty shirt We didn't have a dime no, you So this is what I've done so far So I've got all of my um, treasure braids and uh, lame and the whisper threads on one little loop I've got all of my hand dyed, so all of my um, Gloriana dinky dyes and Karen threads all together on one loop. And then I've put all of my um, MPI silks, which now I've taken them out of the bag and put them in individual bags, look even more stunning than they did before. They're just gorgeous colours now I've opened them up. Not that they weren't before, and then I've just put my DMCs and the Nymo onto another loop. So that's looking pretty good because that now what that means is everything's collectively together and I can go off and check the inventory and just make sure I've got everything. So I'm going to check the beads over. Oh, there's some um, needles in here. I hadn't noticed that. They've actually put some needles in. So there's an embroidery needle and there's also a really nice long beading needle in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. I've missed that. That's cool. I'm really pleased about that. That's a really nice touch. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to just check the inventory off now. So I will probably see you tomorrow. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Morning. It's Saturday now. It's after being joined by my friend. <laughs> it's uh, 20 past one. So it's a little bit later than I'd anticipated starting, but oh, God, I've had a migraine. So I was up at about half past eight this morning, so I didn't sleep great last night because we've had um, a named storm over the UK, which is actually still here. 
um, at the moment bringing a lot of really high winds and rain so that wasn't a whole load of fun last night so I was awake a little bit with that but I was also aware when I was awake that I had a headache and I had a migraine and, and I did the stupid thing of not getting up and taking some medication to prevent it starting properly so I woke up this morning I got up just after eight and just felt shocking um, took painkillers, tried to pull myself around and ended up having to go back to bed for about an hour and a half so did that, got myself sorted, showered, tidied um, myself up a little bit so I could come on so apologies for the late start um, but I am feeling a little bit better, a little bit groggy but like a million times better I mean if I, the thought of trying to film an even stitch this morning was just, it was beyond my capabilities I was like a blooming zombie so feeling much better now so I just need to get myself organized I do need to push the the vacuum cleaner around the house so I just need to do a bit of that and um yeah then I want to come back set my well cut my fabric down to size set it up I'm going to put it onto my Omnique frame and and stitch it like that rather than having all the fabric sort of hanging on my El Bessie lap stand and I might swap it out from time to time depending on how I feel but I'm going to put it on the frame to start with and then we'll just go from there. I mean, already on the comments from last night, people, and, and I need to catch up on the comments as well, so <laughs> people have been saying, um, you know, just make sure you read the instructions really well. And I've, I've already looked at them a couple of times and they make no sense to me whatsoever. So I do need to go back, reread the instructions. I want to print out, you know, the chart, the colour chart, um, in terms of what symbol represents what. I want to get all of that printed. Sorry, I've just had a notification. Um, I want to get that printed out and um, just get organised with it. So, yeah, I will catch up with you over the coming little while and um, eventually we'll get to the point where I sit down and put my first couple of stitches in. So, exciting everything was after the inventory last night everything was present and correct it's all there the beads look amazing the center bead looks amazing it's a flower shaped heliotrope bead and it's just on its own so blingy <laughs> it's just fab so um yeah i will i will see you in a little while take care with just I've just put a needle through the thread so you know you can see exactly where I'll be um, starting in and around so I've needed to use my biggest Omnique frame which I'm just backing up to get it all in it's the big 36 inch one that I've got obviously it's not going to be as wide as I think it's about 25 inches but obviously I've needed to leave uh, fabric for framing purposes later um, but yeah I'm glad I had this one this is Actually, I think it is. I've not been onto the Omnique site for a long time, but the, the pot, at that time it was the largest sort of width you could get without needing to get a custom made. So I'm glad that I've got one that's as big as this. Obviously, my Chris Ortega piece, I think it's on a 26 inch um, frame. So, yeah, I mean, it, I, there was no, I wouldn't even have taken her off anyway, but the frame would have been too small for this. So it's on in all its glory, it's it's all ready to go, it's all super clean. Um, my mum's on her way around as we speak, so I'm going to go and print off the instructions, well not the instructions, but the colour chart, um, the sort of, you know, the key, so I know what each um, symbol represents, and then I'll be able to start this later on this afternoon. So I'll catch you soon, guys. Take care, bye. <coughs> well, I'm ready to go, so. Yeah, I've printed off the colour reference chart and then, not the pattern because I'm going to be using 
my iPad with GoodNote. So that's what I'm going to be working with. But I've printed off all of the colours um, and the references in terms of what you are actually stitching with. And I've also printed off Martina's instructions as well. So I don't have to keep switching pages around on my um, iPad. So I can just sort of check. So there's about four or five pages of notes in terms of what you're going to stitch certain things, certain types of stitches with and, and where they appear and, and such nice. So yeah, I think the, the instructions are, I mean, don't get me wrong, they're not straightforward, but I think, I think I'll think i be okay. So this is the first colour that I'm going to be working with. So it's a really dark violet MPI silk. So I'm looking forward to get going with that. Obviously the massive flower bead sits right in the middle and we're surrounded by a couple of other beads as well, but I'm going to just start putting in some cross stitches first um, before I even get onto any beading. I, I will bead as I go, but I don't want to sort of do anything too drastic right now. So I've got my setup ready. So everything's on my uh, needle needs frame. So my Amonique frame's on there. I've got my center point marked. I've got my little needle minder. So I thought I'd go with a lollipop initially. My camera's all set up so I can show you my first few stitches as we go. Daisy has obviously taken my stitchy spot and will not be there for much longer, will you, Daz? Even though you're not looking at me. <laughs> there she is. Little sweetie's moved. But yeah, I just thought I'd, you know, make a little bit of a start and then just give you some regular updates as I go with my sort of first thoughts and experiences of this. So I will catch you in a little while. Take care. Bye. Hello. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. So I've got my um, dark violet MPI threaded onto my needle. So I'm using the 26 um, needle. So these are the petites um, by John James and I've I bought some of these, I'm trying to think from so-and-so when I ordered the floss away bags a while ago and I'm really enjoying stitching with the, the petite needles at the minute so they're, they're really good. So here we go. So this needle obviously is marking the centre now. The first stitch is one, two, three, four, five up from the middle. So if I take that the sort of the stitch so one two oh hang on hmm. I mean it doesn't really matter that much does it one two three four five so I'm going to put my first stitch there um so we're we're making our first stitch I don't know why I'm feeling as nervous as I am with this you know I mean how many times do we start new projects and I still don't have this amount of anxiety as I do right now. I think it's because of the nature of what it is and, you know, obviously I'm going to be exposed to so many new things, but yeah, so it's on here and um, as one of my subscribers, so Sherry Roberts, hello lovely, um, said to me, you know, no swapping frames, once it's on, it's on. <laughs> and that's definitely the case. I mean, Martina does say in her instructions, that um, you just need to be very careful with a chatelaine and you should mark the top of the fabric so you know which way around it goes because it's often quite difficult to tell um, and you can sometimes get confused and accidentally rotate it which I'll be honest when I first saw these I assumed you did I did think that you rotated for some reason but no you don't um, so I will promise that if I do take this off, um, I will mark the um, fabric. I'm just going to check one, two, three, four, five. So this is the last stitch um, at this point. Obviously, that's the middle stitch. Yeah, five, six, seven, eight. So it's nine, nine across. So, so there you are. So this, I've not stitched two over two with MPI before, but it lays so well. Um, and it's nice that this really rich jewel tone is right in the centre of the mandala. I mean, you know, obviously we looked at the MPIs yesterday, but the colours, I knew there would be, um, are just gorgeous. They really, really are. I'll see if I can zoom you in a tad closer. Oh, gosh.
Yeah, I think we can probably do a little bit closer. You might pick up a bit more rocking on the stand though. Unfortunately, so I hope I don't make you feel too seasick. But I just started this with the standard loop me method. Um, so I don't have to go in from the back and I've kept my um, strands of fabric pretty short just to stop tangling and uh, Martina does say, which I'm going to do now, you know, let it unravel so I just let the needle hang on the back um, just so the, the thread can unravel, she does, she does stress to do that. I mean her instructions are really, really good, They're very, very detailed. Um, I'm going to take that needle out now and put it on my needle minder, I don't need it now. Um, I will bead as I go with this but what I want to do is get some good foundation cross stitches in before I start any of the more detailed work with it. It's not something I'm, you know, I don't have a rush for this. I'm just going to enjoy the process and, um, you know, enjoy the learning experience as well as I learn new stitch and what stitches. And what I will do is I'll just have some spare fabric on a, a lap stand, on my LBC lap stand, and I'll just practice the stitches before I put them into this. I have done a small amount of black work in the past. I don't know whether you remember my Liz Armand's um, say the stitches that I was doing a while ago that's languishing, unfinished in, in my draw of shame, which I do need to get back out. So there was some basic um, specialty stitches within that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one more of these. And then I'm gonna move round to the next leg. It was nine, yeah. So within this square sits the massive um, floral like heliotrope bead. I'm just going to recount one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then I'm coming down here. And then there's a few beads that surround it as well, some delicate beads. But yeah, so I've just created the little frame for where it will sit. It's a set, it's a ten millimeter diameter bead, so it's it's quite it's quite a big one. I've looked at it. I have no idea how I'm going to attach it yet. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Um, obviously, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it eventually. But uh, yeah, we will. We will definitely see. Feels like I'm about to start a stitch with me, doesn't it? But I tell you what, <laughs> there's absolutely no way I'll be doing a stitch with me with this. <laughs> this is something that is going to be very much uh, when I have quiet time. You know. Um, you know, to, to work on when I have a bit of time and I can really concentrate on it because because it's so new to me. Um, I really don't want to mess it up. I mean, obviously, um, yeah, I mean, it's and, and they're not cheap either. There was a comment, I can't remember who wrote it, on, um, I do need to reply as well to a few comments on my, the upload I put up last night uh, around um, the price of the, um, the kits from European Cross Stitch and obviously I showed mine which is, is an expensive kit and, and I just want to say that not all of the kits are as expensive. This one obviously has a lot of MPIs in it. I was going to kit up um, the Butter Butterfly Lace Mandala before I did this one but it was just the colours in this that got me. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one more. And this is why I went for this one but the Butterfly Lace Mandala's kit was, oh, was less than half the price of this so I guess it just depends on what you what you've chosen and what's in the packs but you know I'm no expert on this but you can swap out if there's MPIs and you don't want to pay the MPI price you can you know, not have them in your pack and, and swap them out for DMC if you wanted to you know you don't have to go with everything that's in the pack if you wanted to get some components of it yourself or you already had some of the colours. Um, but yeah. It's, uh, I'm quite enjoying it. <laughs> Not that I've really done much yet, but um, I'm going to probably switch the camera off now because you know you don't want to see me just doing a cross stitch, but I've almost done at the first part. There we go. Look at this. First part of the mandala. But I'm, I'm so excited to get into all of the other types of floss as well that are in the kit. 
I mean, there's so much stuff that I've never used before. I was saying um, in the video when I opened the, the kit that I, I just haven't, I've, I've stitched with Krynik, but never Petite Treasure Braid, never used a lot of the Gloriana, I've never used, um, so I've used Water Lilies, but not the Wildflowers. I've not stitched with Dinky Dyes ever. Um, you know, I have used some hand dyed threads, like, you know, thread gatherers and and things like that, but never, which is the other one, a gentle art sampler threads I've used, but not the ones that are in this pack. So there's an awful lot of new things to me in here that I've never really worked with. So I think that's going to be part of the joy as well, is seeing how those different types of thread come together to make the overall design. But yeah, hope I'm going to have enough on this. So it'll work out the equivalent of 14 count when it's done, because obviously I'm stitching it two over two on 28. So um, I, it's not 28 is something I tend not to go for. And I admire anybody who ever does a one over one on this, because I know some people stitch their heaven and earth. Oh, hang on, I've miscounted. I haven't put it in the right hole. I know some people, it's because I was talking about one over one, uh, stitch their heaven and earths one over one on a 28. I mean, hats off to you. It's small. Um, 25 is the smallest I tend to go for, but um, oh, I'm pushing my luck to get the last stitch out of this. Oh! There we go. First round done. Exciting. So I will come back. I'm going to work on this. Um, but I'll just give you regular updates and you can see how I how I get on and and I'll share sort of first experiences with you as this happens over the next few days anyway but you know I know it's very early days but so far so good I feel as though I've got around <laughs> the first step which is which is always a good start so I'm going to carry on I'm going to get myself comfortable put something on the TV um, and and just you know continue to to do some of the stitching. So I will catch you soon with an update. Take care. Bye. Hey guys, it's about well, it's just gone eleven o'clock. So I have finished working with my MPI silk uh, four five seven. This really nice deep violet color and stitched. Not everything within the mandala, well, the centre of the mandala that's in this colour. There is a whole sort of section that comes around. But what I don't want to do is travel sort of too far off and end up miscounting. So I want to call it a night now because obviously I wasn't great with my head today. So I just want to make sure I get a good night's sleep so I can have a good day at this tomorrow. There are some other cross-stitchy sections within this, but there's a lot of beading in this centre. So I'm discovering, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm probably not going to bead anytime soon, but yeah, I'll be sort of working on this through tomorrow. So I will be able to give you, you know, updates as we go, but it's, it's nice. And I'm really enjoying doing something that's completely different. And the pattern really does have a good flow to it. I can sort of understand what's supposed to happen in terms of the pattern, if you get what I mean. Obviously, there's a center section that has its own little section on the pattern, and then it's a case of starting to build around bit by bit until you gradually push out to the edge. But yeah, it's been a joy, and I've had a really good evening working on this. Not as long as I would have liked, but you know, it's the way it goes, isn't it? There's other stuff to do in life rather than sit and stitch, sadly. Um, but yeah, I will be back tomorrow to um, to catch up with you then. Take care. Bye. It's Sunday morning and I'm just chilling with this little cutie here. I'm just rubbing her chest and she's sitting on my knee. She's just so dozy. She doesn't know how to keep her eyes open. She's down. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Daisy. 
I said proper good morning to you now. So it's now just gone 11 on Sunday morning. So I'm going to pick up back where I left off with my Chatelaine last night. So I'd finished a lot of the um, sort of basic shape with the MPI silk that I was working with last night. So it was really the deep violet. And now <clears throat> the pattern's calling for um, Gloriana thread in Velvet Night Sky, which is... I'll take it out of the packet. I don't know whether it'll translate. I'm not sure how good the lighting is um, here. I'm sort of working in natural daylight, which is fine for me, but I don't know how good, but it's this really deep blue. I mean, it's it's so vibrant. The violet was, the way, the way they catch the light, it's just, it's just gorgeous. So um, yeah, I've never, I've never stitched with Gloriana, um, which, is really nice so I'm just going to undo it. This one isn't as variegated as some of them. Oh, Daisy get off careful! Just trying to get on my knee. <laughs> oh gosh bear with me two texts while well, I just put my um, my guys on so I can undo the knot. <laughs> uh, it's better I can see now. So I've got Daisy's head resting on my arm because she's desperate to push this away so she can get on my knee. She's been on my knee for probably about the last hour while I've had breakfast and coffee and you know just chilled a little bit before I came to the stitching. So I've woken up migraine free which is brilliant um, which means I should be able to have a good stint on this bar. a couple of things that I need to do today which isn't a lot just a bit of general lighthouse work and um, you know I want to do some gym stuff today. So I'm either going to get on the treadmill or the bike. Uh, maybe I need to clean the birds out at some point and then maybe just a bit of really light housework. So nothing major, nothing pressing, which is nice. I like days like this where you can just relax and do a, a bit. Got quite a busy week with work next week, so... I won't get much stitchy time on the evenings, I don't think, next week. But hey ho. So there's not loads of variegation in this Gloriana thread, on this particular colour anyway. However, um, it's calling for two over two, so I'm just going to get off days. She's resting on my arm. Get off! Um, I'm going to find the end which is there, but I am going to sort of lay two strands side by side on this anyway, so if there is variegation it doesn't get lost, you know, I wouldn't do the loop method with this. So I'm just going to cut this and uh, thread my needle and I'll be right back with you. Well, we're ready to go. So, um, I've never, as I said, I've never worked with Gloriana. It is, you can see, it's a little bit kinky. Um, in terms of the strands, I'm just going to be very careful it doesn't knot, so I'm probably just going to let the needle hang on the back quite a bit as I, as I work in this colour. It's an amazing shade. And it felt, it feels really nice. I looked on the back of the packet, I mean, this is how little I know about a lot of these threads. So this is a hand-dyed silk. Um, I thought it felt quite sort of satiny um, as I was taking it off um, and undoing the strands, but yeah, it's... Oh my god, the colour's amazing. I don't know whether or not it's showing on here in terms of the shade. Let me see if I can zoom you in a little bit further without losing. Pull this back a bit. Um, I'm hoping you can see it. I'm probably right in the top corner, which maybe isn't that great. What's the best way to move it forward without knocking the camera? Oop. Probably not going to push my luck. Um, but I'm doing, I'm railroading all of these stitches anyway just to make that top leg lay really nicely. And I've done a, an upload on the railroading technique anyway. So you can go and check that out if you've not seen it. But basically, you're just splitting the top leg. Um, I mean, you could railroad both strands if you wanted to, but I don't, I don't normally. But this is just, it's just lovely to work on. I think I found my like new passion in life when it comes to stitching you lot. <laughs> I really do. 
it's just nice to do something different, isn't it? And there's so much variety within it that, you know, I'm not going to get bored. I'm going to pull this camera back out now because I'm just, I'm aware I'm right at the top and I don't want it to look boring for you. I'm just going to mark off these stitches on my, on my good notes. But it really, it really is lovely. And I was reading the rest of the, not that I didn't read the instructions, but I reread all of the instructions last night and um, Martina sets everything out so well. So all of the specialty stitches, um, she has a few pages on the back explaining everything, but she takes each section of the mandala and explains which colours she wants you to stitch each of the specialty stitches in and how to do it. Um, and then you sort of gradually, as I was saying, pattern wise, work your way out. So there is sort of a specific way to stitch these, but the instructions just make sense. Um, but the way that they're set up, it really, it really does make sense. So I don't know whether or not I'll really get onto any specialty stitches today, but you know, I'm going to try and get in as much of the the bulk of the the cross stitch um, initially before I start to do anything too fancy because then I've got my sort of overall layout for where all of the fancy bits go. I mean, I wouldn't start thinking, right, I'm going to put a specialty stitch like here, for example. I think there's some, oh, I don't know what they are, uh, like a Jessica stitch or an Algerian eyelet or something. I wouldn't, you know, for me, start thinking, oh, I want to put those in. I would want to just wait and, um, and sort of see where everything progresses to, really. It's quite a bit of gold. Um, work to do over the top of some of these stitches as well to really make it pop but as I said I don't know if the colours are really translating on the video but they are beautiful I mean this blue against the purple yeah it's just gorgeous I knew the colours the dual tones were going to be amazing I really did and I, I'm glad I, I bit the bullet and went for this one um, as, as my first in terms of all the different thread types because a lot of them to be fair um, have a lot of DMC in so you know that, that and that's and that's great you know it keeps the cost down a little bit you know the butterfly lace garden that I was going to work on has a lot of DMC shades in but I just wanted to get exposed to different types of materials and and also the um, you know the the, the 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 amount of specialty stitches as well and this one has quite a lot of them so I know I'm going to expose to get to quite a lot and learn a lot through this piece as well which is what I want to do I mean when it comes to regular cross stitching and a bit of black work yeah I feel pretty confident in terms of how that works but this is like a whole new level for me and if I can if I can do a chatelaine I could probably turn my hand to just about anything so so he's hoping eh but yeah no this is this is just lovely to stitch with this Gloriana if you've not stitched with Gloriana before it's it's gorgeous I mean it's as nice as 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 any silk like the MPIs both, are, both are lovely. Hello, I just thought I'd come and show you my latest progress report. So the Gloriana uh, silk is now, the section I was working on is now finished. So it's just gone half past 12 and I'm now going to introduce this other MPI silk, uh, which is a 465 and it's another really vibrant shade of blue. Um, I'm trying to think what the colour's called. I don't. I don't think I have. Is it Delft blue? Let's have a look. Uh, take on. I'll just pull the colour card over. Yeah, it's Delft blue dark that I'm going to be working with. So there's some within 
obviously the Gloriana. So this, this section is defined as like a pond, which obviously would be the reason why there's lots of blue shades within it. So yeah, I'm just gonna crack on and put some of this MPI in and then I'll come back in a wee while for a catch up. So I'll see you soon, bye. Hello, it's now quarter past one. I just thought I'd come and give you a quick update. So I've just worked this top section with the MPI I was introducing earlier. Um, so it's coming along, but as you can see outside, we have, excuse the uh, window at the bottom of the garden, it's still there. I do need to get that um, up for sale. But as you can see, we've got glorious blue sky, um, and this little one's been getting a little bit fractious while she's been sat next to me. So I'm going to go get organized, take her for a walk, and then have lunch. Um, get some laundry going and then I'll come back and resume and pick up with you when I put this bottom section in and I'm about to change colour. So I'll catch you in a couple of hours. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Like the day before You're like a stone on my pillow I don't make a sound when I shut the door You don't have to wake up yet We can spend all day in bed Hey guys, it's just gone 4 o'clock So I've got the rest of the Delft Blue NPI in. So just sort of finished off that section of the mandala. So that's all coming together really nice and looks incredibly rich. So I have taken Dirty for a walk, got through most of the laundry, made lunch, cleaned the birds out, so, and then stitched for the last 40 minutes or so, just finishing that section. So I've done quite a lot in the time I've been away. So now the next thing to add in, is some petite treasure braid in PB35, which is um, classed as a dark gold. And this is going in here and around. All that is filled in with beads, so that's all beads. Most of this section is beads. And then a lot of the specialty stitches start kicking in around here. So I'm not sure whether I'll get onto any of those today, but you never know. <laughs> But yeah, thoroughly enjoying it. Really, really interesting to work on it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get on and see how I get on with the petite treasure bread. I've never used this. I've used Krynik or Krenik, however you want to pronounce it, with varying degrees of success. It often frays when you're working with it, so I don't know how this will stack up. But we will see, and I'll no doubt report and let you know as I get around the next section. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Hey guys, the bling is starting. So I've just put in the petite treasure braid gold, which looks so amazing against those blues. But now we are onto um, sections of specialty stitches. So I am going to go and make a cup of tea and reread the instructions for the specialty stitches that are coming and um, yeah bring the other camera back across and then I might have a go um, with them we'll see we'll see if I can sort of get away with it and um, yeah show you some of the specialty stitches going in which considering I've never done any is quite brave so we'll see we'll see how it goes but i'm gonna go and get a cuppa and i'll catch you in a bit bye hello <laughs> so the first specialty stitches that i am going to attempt are some combined rice stitches so this is made up of three different colors so the kind of underlying diagonals are made up of this beautiful <laughs> teal coloured MPI silk which I don't think you is, is showing really well on here but you'll see it in a, in a little while I think it's just bouncing off the um, you can maybe see it on the lower part of the screen 
and then the top layer is MPI um, 481 but again you'll see that looking a little bit better then we've got some petite treasure braid which makes up the middle section which is this gold um, PBO2 so I will be stitching like the diagonals in first for a few of the stitches and then coming back and overlaying the sort of other um, stitches so that that is the plan and I'll come back and fill the center goal bits in so yeah I mean we'll just go with the flow and see and see how it goes so I'm gonna just thread my needles and this uses one strand of silk and um, and petite treasure braid so yeah I'll catch you in a wee moment right okay I've secured the MPI on the back uh, sorry about the the lighting obviously the camera is now sitting in the shadow of the light so this is these are stitched over sort of what would be like two blocks so I'm doing exactly as requested so that first leg is coming down there and then the second leg is going straight there so there's the first set of crosses <laughs> so there should be a gap there according to this yep yeah. and then this is going to come down again left to right and then up that way right so there's the, those two and then the next one attaches itself like directly under here so this is where the next one's gonna go and it leaves like one gap so that one goes there and then This one's going to come next to it. So we're going to fit another one here. Okay, when for? Oh, Google Home, honestly. <laughs> it disturbs me. <laughs> Every now and again it'll speak. And it absolutely... Sorry, what time is that? <laughs> absolutely freaks me out. Because <laughs> I haven't even like, asked it anything. Sorry, I couldn't catch the time. Just say, for instance, 6.30... Hey Google! Noon. Stop! No problem. No new alarm set. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? Oh my god. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. One, two. I just need to check. I think I've gone the wrong way there. I, I mean, I don't think this bit matters that much. It's coming from the bottom up, isn't it? It's a plumbing bloody Google through me. Right. And then I've got another one that sits about here. Okay, so I've come up in the first spot where I think I need to be. And then I'm just going to count and follow it um, in the way that it's described here. It's so tiny, honestly, and it's going to take me a bit of getting used to in terms of getting in the right spot. And, and while I was putting in some of the other stitches earlier, just making these simple crosses, I found that I was holding my breath, <laughs> so I need to relax. <laughs> it's only stitching, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's going down there. And then the next one is in the middle, seven and eight. That goes down there, seven, eight, and then nine is that way, so then it comes at the bottom, nine, ten, nine, ten, eleven and twelve is that. You can't see the you can't see what's beneath it though. That's that's interesting. You can't I can't see like the other colour because this is just laid straight over the top of it. I, I mean I'm following the instructions perfectly. It just seems like a little bit weird that you'd lose all of that that vibrant blue below. Maybe you don't quite when you put the rest of it on. 
1718 is over here. 17, 18, 18, 19 and 20. Whew. And then I have to come back and put the centre cross in, which is I guess where you will see that darker blue underneath the um, gold petite, petite treasure braid. So yeah, I'm going to carry on doing these little dinky stitches and uh, yeah I will catch you in a wee while. <laughs> Take care, bye for now. Well I've got the whole section done around here with these rice stitches. Oh my god it's so cool, I love it. And I've got my gold on so I'm just going to put the little gold cross in the middle now. I'll tell you what though this 28 counts blooming tiny. It's wrecking my eyes. <laughs> Down there, you can you can see the green still, which is good. Like that darker teal underneath, which is good. You can see that. Ooh, it's going to be such a discovery. Very exciting. I must admit, I've had like a whale of a time this weekend working on this. It's just so unbelievably cool. It's just great fun. And I can't believe I've done my first, like, official, proper, like, rice stitches. I genuinely never thought I would ever stitch one of these. Just from the point of view of, like, the complexity of them, I just never thought I would be able to do it and I've, I've, I'm shocking myself that I am and yeah you just got to take a bit of a leap a leap of faith everything's set out so beautifully on the pattern in terms of instructions it's you know providing you follow carefully and take your time I don't think there's anybody who couldn't do this from a cross stitch perspective whether you are an experienced stitcher or a new stitcher I really don't think it would matter I think I honestly I think anybody should give this a go there we go I'm just going to continue putting in the rest of these stitches and working my way along so as I said I would, here are the stitches up close and personal, so they're really really pretty actually, um, yeah they look really really nice, I'm chuffed to bits with the effect that they give off actually, I can now breathe, <laughs> I've got my first stitches over and done with, so obviously I've got a whole load of them to do around here and then there's some I think they are satin stitches that connect I think they are stitched in um, gold oh no Gloriana I think I don't know we'll find out when I, I get to that bit um, but yeah no it's it's coming along a treat so I, I'm gonna get something to eat and then come back and do a bit more later so I will see you in a bit bye for now Nine hours of work gone into this so far. So I'm quite happy with what I've managed to achieve. So I managed to fi uh, finish off all of those sort of um, rice stitches or kind of variations on rice stitches. So they are all looking lovely. And then I've just been in, it's not very good, sorry. And I've stitched the satin stitch in the Velvet Night Garden Gloriana, which is the same colour as that that's in the middle of the MPI. So it's my first attempt at satin stitch, so I'm really pleased with that. I think it's laying really well. So that's stitch three ply of Gloriana. So obviously this section here needs to be filled in in the same way. I think there's beads to go in these 
or the little stitches. I think it's the bugle beads that go in there. And then obviously, I'm not quite sure about this section. I know that's quite heavily beaded as is the centre around the big min focal bead. But yeah, it's coming along really nicely. I'm chuffed to bits with it. But I'm going to, oh, sorry, I'm going to yawn. Oh, dear me, I'm going to call it a night. I hope you've enjoyed the, the journey with me as I start the progress or the process rather um, what I will say is if you would love to stitch a chatelaine and are concerned that it might be out of your depth I just want to put everybody's mind at ease they are not difficult at all yeah I mean there's some challenges don't get me wrong but the instructions are set out so beautifully that it just makes it so easy um, you cannot go wrong with one you really can't and I'm I'm saying that honestly because I was a bit worried that I'd bought a pretty expensive kit and was unsure that I would be able to do it. but honestly I've been amazed about how straightforward and um, and well explained the instructions are so if you want to give it a go please give it a go and uh, yeah, I will no doubt catch up with you at some point during the week. So take care, guys. Have a great week. Bye for now. Oh.